हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न स्टेप बाय स्टेप मैनेजमेंट ऑफ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमन टेकी अरिदमियाज दैट वी फेस मेनी टाइम्स इन द इमरजेंसी एंड दैट इज सुप्रा वेंट्रिकुलर टेकी कार्डिया टुडे इज वीडियो इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू सी दिस वीडियो टिल द एंड सो दैट यू विल बी एबल टू मैनेज दिस अरिदमिया एट द बेड साइड एंड इफ यू हैव कम फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम ऑन दिस चैनल then do subscribe this channel for more such clinical videos so friends without wasting much time let's start the video so what is supraventricular tachycardia it is a narrow complex tachycardia and it has a regular rhythm and often the p waves are upset this is the ecg of a supraventricular tachycardia and this tachycardia has a rate of 152 to 50 so this is the morphology of supraventricular tachycardia now how to go for the management of this patient so in the initial assessment you will first determine if the patient is hemodynamically stable or not so how you will do this if there is hypotension chest pain dyspnea or pulmonary edema altered mental status or shock if any one of these is present in the patient then we can say then the patient is hemodynamically unstable if the patient is hemodynamically unstable then the management is different and if the patient is hemodynamically stable then the management is different so the first step in the management of supraventricular tachycardia is to determine if the patient is hemodynamically stable or not so if the patient is unstable then without wasting much time we will go for a synchronized cardioversion we will use a biphasic machine you can see a picture of a biphasic machine here and you will give a shock of 5200 joules if there is no response you can increase it up to 150 or 200 joules if the patient is conscious and it is safe then you should sedate the patient and you will always keep a crash cart ready while doing cardioversion so this is the management of an unstable patient with supraventricular tachycardia if the patient is hemodynamically stable then there are three steps that we have to follow so in the first step we will go for vagal maneuvers if this is not effective then we will go for iv adenosine if adenosine is also not effective then we will go for these anti arrhythmic drugs that is verapamil diltiazem and beta blockers so now we will see these steps one by one so the first is vagal maneuvers and the important vagal maneuver that we are going to see is modified valsalva it has been found in the revert trial that modified valsalva is very effective in supraventricular tachycardia so how this is done so it is done in three steps in the first step a patient is made to sit in a semi recumbent position and he is asked to blow in a 10 cc syringe as you can see here the patient is blowing in a 10 cc syringe for 15 seconds and this creates a pressure of 40 mm of mercury then the patient is made to lie down and a 15 second passive leg raising is done by elevating the legs for up to 45 degrees so this is the second step and in the third step the patient is again made to sit in a semi recumbent position for about 30 seconds so in this way the modified valsalva maneuver is done apart from that you can also do a carotid sinus massage and this should be avoided in the elderly patients and another thing that you can do is you can splash cold water on the face of the patient to stimulate the vagal so in this way the vagal maneuvers are first done to try to control the supraventricular tachycardia if vagal maneuvers are unsuccessful then we go for adenosine and adenosine is the drug of choice in supraventricular tachycardia so how this drug is given so the dose is 6 mg rapid iv bolus and immediately after giving the drug you have to u a 20 ml of flush this is because the half life of the drug is very short that is it is less than 10 seconds 
So immediately you have to give a flush of 20 ml of NS. If there is no response, you can repeat the dose of 12 mg and again if there is no response, you can again repeat another dose of 12 mg. So in this way, you can give three doses, 6 mg, 12 mg and 12 mg. An important thing is that after giving adenosine, you can see transient flushing and transient asystole for 1 to 2 seconds. But it is transient and the patient recovers within seconds. And this drug is to be avoided in severe asthma, second and third degree block and also in WPW syndrome with atrial fibrillation. And in this way, adenosine is given by using a two syringe method. From one syringe, the actual dose is injected and from the another syringe, a flush of normal saline is given. So, this is the second step of management of supraventricular tachycardia in stable patient that is giving adenosine. If the adenosine is also not effective, then we go for certain second line drugs like first is verampabil. The dose is 5 mg slow IV and you can repeat this dose after 10 minutes if there is no response. Then we can also give diltiazem. The dose is 0.25 mg per kg IV. And if no response, you can repeat the dose of 0.35 mg per kg IV. You can also use metoprolol and the dose is 2.5 to 5 mg IV. And you can repeat this up to 15 mg. So in this way, in a stable patient with supraventricular tachycardia, we first go for vagal maneuvers then for adenosine and then for second line drugs. Can we use cardioversion in stable patient? Yes, there are certain conditions where you can use cardioversion in stable patient. Like if the uh, supraventricular tachycardia is refractory to medications, in spite of giving adenosine or second line drugs, there is no response, then you can go for cardioversion. If the patient is deteriorating, then also you can do cardioversion. And if the rhythm is uncertain, you are not sure if it is really supraventricular tachycardia or it is ventricular tachycardia. So, in these three conditions, you can do cardioversion in a stable patient. Now, once the supraventricular tachycardia is controlled and patient in, is in the sinus rhythm, then you have to go for the search of the causes of supraventricular tachycardia and also do planning for the long term. So, this is called as post-conversion care. So, how you will do this? So, first you will do the ECG to detect if there is any pre-excitation or there is any ischemia. So, these signs of pre-excitation or signs of ischemia may be masked during supraventricular tachycardia and once patient is in sinus rhythm, these signs can be seen in the ECG. So, first you will do the ECG. Then you will check various electrolytes like potassium, magnesium, and you will also see the thyroid status of the patient because these are the causes for supraventricular tachycardia. Then you will identify the triggers like if there is any stress, use of or consumption of caffeine, alcohol, or if the patient is on certain decongestants. So, these may be the triggers for supraventricular tachycardia. Now, if the patient is having recurrent supraventricular tachycardia, you will send patient for the electrophysiological studies so that patient can undergo radio frequency ablation. And you will also explain to the patient some home valsalva maneuvers so that uh, patient can do that at home to try to control supraventricular tachycardia. So, in summary, first you will check the stability of the patient, hemodynamic stability of the patient. If the patient is hemodynamically unstable, then you will go for synchronized cardioversion. If patient is stable, then you will go for step 2. So, first you will go for Valsalva maneuvers where you will do a modified Valsalva. If it is not successful, then you will go for adenosine. Here you will can try 3, three doses, 6 mg then 12 mg and 12 mg. If this is not successful, then you will go for second line drugs like calcium channel blockers or beta blockers. And if the SVT is persistent or worsening, you can go for cardioversion. And the last thing, 
you will do a post conversion evolution and do some long term planning so friends in this way in today's video we have seen the management of an important arrhythmia called as supraventricular tachycardia so if you find this video helpful share with your batchmates with your friends and if you have come for the first time on this channel then do subscribe this channel for more such clinical videos see you in the next video with a new topic till then thank you